Hi, what you're looking at here is Ubuntu 64-bit running in VirtualBox on Windows 7. What we're going to do today is install LucidDB and have it start up and shut down like a service does in Windows or a daemon in Linux. To do this, you need to make sure that you have a Java runtime environment set up. You can do that by running this command here. Install libaio, which enables kernel asynchronous I.O. for use by Lucid. You also need to have a Java underscore home defined pointing to your Java runtime environment. Then st step four is just simply unpacking the Lucid archive, running its little install. That gets it ready to go. Then we have to do something that's a little more detailed, which is downloading the Java service wrapper, unzipping it, transplanting a couple of its files in LucidDB, creating a config, and then tell the OS about static linked libraries that won't be found uh, as a result of using Tanuki's wrapper. That I can't explain why. But then running ldconf to tell the OS about those static linked libraries from the step six. And then once the whole thing works, you add a symbolic link to your init directory and add it to startup. So let's start going through these steps. We need to install LucidDB at this point because this is the directory we're going to do it in and nothing's there. We'll have a directory called LucidDB now, and let's rename that to a shorter name. That's all I'm doing there. So our Lucid is ready to be installed here. To get that to work, we all we need to do is go into the install directory and run this script called install. You can see the last line of the script causes this jar collection of paths to be written to a file in the bin directory called classpath.gen. Indeed, if we look in the bin directory, that's our class path. So at this point, Lucid will work. The only requirement as said before, is a Java environment set up and Java home defined. So we can grep for this to make sure that we have one. Indeed we do. So let's try running LucidDB server. OK, as you can see, our server loaded successfully. Now we want to try connecting to it just to make sure. In this directory, you see the file we just ran to start the server, LucidDB server, and also SQLine client. Let's run SQLine client to verify our connectivity with the server. If we would have received an error here, that would indicate that our server wasn't started, so everything is good. Let's quit, clear, and stop the server. Now it's time for a little bit of brain surgery where we will install the service wrapper. So going back to our main BI directory, let's undo that archive. Installing the service wrapper here involves creating a couple of directories, one called conf, which will hold a configuration file for Tanuki's wrapper the other one called logs, where Tanuki by default likes to put their wrapper.log file. In the conf directory, we will copy over an example wrapper.conf. In the bin directory, we need to copy over the 
demo app, which is a script that starts the wrapper file that you see on the left. And we're going to name it LucidDB for our purposes. You see it over here. Let's make it executable. chmod plus x LucidDB. Okay. And copy wrapper over there. Finally, the wrapper needs some of its supporting libraries. This lib wrapper.so and wrapper.char. We'll just copy those over. Right now, everything's in the right place. The next step is to edit the configuration file and edit that startup script to make sure that it reads the configuration file. Let's use gedit for that. OK, first things first. We need to point to our Java command. That's the actual command to run Java. And it wouldn't hurt to set the Java home path explicitly in this config. Also, the Java service wrapper has several different modes of executing applications. We are going to use the simple method, if you could call this simple. We need to make sure the wrapper can find itself and that all of the class path for our application can be found. Remember that we need to look here at class path gen, which was generated during the installer of Lucid. So we copy this path out and just paste it here. You don't have to do anything else to it, fortunately. It's quite long. Now we need to add a couple of library paths and be sure to number them sequentially. The first library path will be to our plugin directory, Lucid. Second one will be to the fennel, lib fennel directory. And the fourth one is just the current directory. There are a number of parameters that we need to add here to be exact. The first one is for Borago, and we set it to the Lucid DB install directory. The second one, and finally, some logging. One last parameter here. The logs directory we created earlier is referenced here. I'm going to give this thing a description. So 
since we're running the community edition, none of these things really apply, but I can get rid of them. It appears that setting these things would be very important for Windows. I'll just set them here for completeness. And we're done with that file. We need to hop over to the bin directory in that script that starts up LucidDB and customize it. So here for the app name, we'll go ahead and call this like VM LucidDB. Give it a longer name here. Make sure that it's actually reading the correct conf file. It looks good. Let's give it one more look over here. All of our parameters. This this is a area for failure here. One, two, three, four. That's good. One, two, three. Okay, that's good. Everything looks great. Let's go ahead and try to fire this up. As mentioned in the notes previously, over here in LD SO conf, there's a file that's been created called, or I'm sorry, LD SO conf.d. There's a file called lucidDB.conf, and inside it, it points to a directory inside this install. And uh, inside that directory here, you'll see a lot of these little .so files. Well, the system has to know where those are, so the service wrapper can actually help this app launch, and then the app will still be able to find everything it needs to do its business. Let's make sure that that's updated. Okay, that should have done it. Now we can try out our service wrapper. Ah, got a G. Okay. Looks like this will work this time. You can see that the server has started up successfully. We can verify again with the SQL line client. We are able to connect, so that works great. The only thing left to do is to create a symbolic link which I've already done, so I'll go ahead and show you where that is. I created a symbolic link back to the place where that script is that starts wrapper and causes this thing to launch as a service. So I created it here and then ran this final command, update-rc.d specified lucidDB as that file, and then told it the run levels to start on and the ones to stop on, and that's it. You're good. Enjoy.